Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got a special episode planned for you all. We're going on part three of our 109 block engine rebuild that I may have to change that name afterwards. Check out the video, you'll understand why. But I wanted to wish you all happy holidays. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. And if you want to reach out, if you have any Turbo Buick questions, reach out to me on Instagram, Crash and Burn, or on TikTok. I wish there was a way we could communicate you know, direct messaging on YouTube, but there isn't, unfortunately. So just reach out to me on, you know, Instagram or TikTok. I'd be happy to talk all day. Uh, or shoot me your number and, and I can call you and we can talk about it. In any case, thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. Let's get to the video. Hey, Luke Bernard here. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, good. What's going on? Uh, well, I looked over this six block, mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't do you any favors. Oh, man. Once I got it all cleaned up, somebody has gone across uh, the deck surface on one side and cut really deep into it. That's why the head gasket wouldn't hold. And it looks like they tried to get it to hold by putting silicone on the head gasket, and that never works. Jeez. So it's already been decked because the other side's just as nice as it can be. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't think we should try to deck it anymore to come out, you know, to chase those low spots. Mm -hmm. One goes right to the outside of the back of the block. Ooh. And I don't want the piston to set too high to get too much compression in this turbo. Right. It looks like this thing has ju had just been done. Yes, yeah, so I was like, I said, this is going to be quick once I get it all, you know, I got caught up and out and went back at it. And it is on the driver's side as the deck surface is tore up. Matter of fact, it looks like the grinder got away with him a couple of times and got the uh, the dowel pins for centering the heads. Oh, geez. <laughs> it's so bad you can feel it with your thumb rubbing it across it. You can feel it go down and then back up. Damn. And they have, they did, they had to know. They had to know when they put it together. That's why was, I, when I got it out of the tank, I'm rinsing it off. There's all this silicone on this side of the cylinder head. And the other side of the cylinder head, there's still gaskets stuck to it. Mm -hmm. I said, what the hell happened over here? <laughs> so I wire brushed it and said, oh, I see what happened over here. Damn. Somebody got, got a little, you know, I don't know what they were trying to do. Um... I think what it was was the original gasket. They were trying to get it off, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. I don't know. Just went too far. Okay. Yes. Okay. And do my research then. See what we're Okay. Doing. And see what you can come up with. But as it stand, this, this poor fella here, <laughs> they didn't do him any help. After hearing the bad news from Luke, I was pretty bummed, but I started looking at replacement engines right away. I found a few on Facebook and Carpart, but when I came across this ad, I had to find out more. Looking at the ad, it says that these engines have distributors, but they only have the hole for a distributor in the timing cover. The cam sensor is a perfect fit for it. That means this block is going to be perfect for what we need it for. Samara went out of business and the seller bought these engines in a bulk sale. Delco Line is a local AC Delco distributor and is still in business. Looking at the lifter valley, this looks like my 84 block. That's currently in Astro Roof. The seller sent me some of these pictures of the paperwork. That Buick 231A and the part number ending in 8654 refers to the correct rear wheel drive block. Although it's not a 109 and may not be a factory turbo block, it will bolt up and work for us. Looking at this, it was rebuilt in 91 and has been sitting for nearly 30 years. So unfortunately, we got bad news from Luke, our engine builder. That block is no good. The heads can be saved. We got to get new camshaft and all that stuff anyway. But, you know, without options for a block, I need to be able to find something that I can put back in Astro Roof. And lo and behold, this deal just popped up on Facebook Marketplace. So I grabbed a trailer and we're on our way now. There's a great website on ttype.org that goes over the history of all of the Buick blocks just so that you can make an informed decision on which choice that you're making and how it will relate to the turbo Buick that you're putting your engine in. So we know that VIN A blocks are ones that can be used on, on our cars. And 
that's what I'm taking a look at today. The key to me will be what the lifter holds, what the area around the lifter holds look like. You know, if they're spotted, then that lets you know that they're 86, 87. If not, then they're earlier than that. If 20 bolt versus 14 bolt as well. And then where the boss is for the, for the turbo drain line, or if there is one that's plugged up. So that's a short list of things that I'm going to be looking at when I get there to make sure that this is in fact a block that we can use. All right, so we got the U-Haul heading over to Starbucks, grab some morning cup, and then we'll be back on the road. Inside Dominion Motors right now, we got a Chrysler Imperial Crown over here. We got another Imperial over there. And we've got these engines and they are the real deal. They are out of a 3.8 Regal and I think they'll work. They'll just need a little bit of work to, to get them ready for dropping into Astro Roof, but looks good. We also lined up a tour. There's gonna to be some interesting cars and parts to see. So let's check it out. Let's see. So I got two five five two four one four zero, and then the tag from General Motors. He really loves these old Chryslers. Ooh, I don't even know what it is. It's an old one. I've never seen this before. Arnold? No, old race car. As you can tell, my uncle likes the wagons because yes. the motor's in them. That's why he likes those four. Oh, yeah. These LT1s. Roadmasters. Ah, custom cruisers. Ooh, wow. And there's more old Chrysler's in the back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's still collecting, right? Yes, like, but it's active? right now he's focused on trucks. So he gets a lot of trucks all the way from the 40s to modern day, but they're big trucks, like farm use trucks, like Dodge L600s, big Ooh. ones. Like there's a couple out back. Wow, oh wow. That just reminds me of like the Griswold. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Oh, crazy. These Imperials. One guy's supposed to come and get a couple of these, but that's going to be a disaster trying to get them out of here. Yeah, this is deep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, Okay, I see a buggy. Okay. I like the paint job on that one. Ooh, love this truck. Wow. What the? It's... Okay. It's Aston Martin? Oh, it's the Jensen Interceptor. Look at that. Crazy, just looking around here. It's old Jag too. This Jensen is worse for wear. Let's check out inside. It's the MG. Nice. I don't want to take the covers off of anything that exists here. Got an old XJ6. Got a Trans Am over here. I love these Pontiacs. Ooh. It's a Triumph. A nice little TR6 drop top. 
Sweet. Old XJ6. This is nice. Silver bullet. Ah, oh, that interior is so nice. Look at that. That leather's like nobody sat in it. Have you seen a Nevada tea before? <laughs> I've only seen one on ads, like TV. The squared off headlights remind me. Oh my goodness. Oh. Beautiful, look at those lines. Wow. Can I? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a lock. Oh, wow. The door's heavy. Oh, man. That's pristine. Yeah. And it runs. <laughs> wow. What's the mileage on that thing? 8,000 miles? Yeah. Crazy. The paint is just perfect. Look at that pearl white. It's a different one. Uh, I wish we had one of our, one of my favorite ones isn't here, but another favorite. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. I've never seen a Packard in real life. Yeah, that's one guy in the photo. Uh, the 300 before there was a new 300 there yeah. was this one <laughs> wow we use this for a fundraiser a little bit in the fall time mm -hmm. they wanted a hearse but we sold the hearse we had <laughs> so I'm like this is the closest thing to a hearse <laughs> that we got is that a sunroof yeah a bubble that. window whoa I've never seen that Oh, wow. Really, really cool. All right, so it is It is what I thought it was. It's a block, it will work. And we just need to load it up in the back of the U-Haul now. So let's do that. Okay. What's the best way? Maybe I can find the wood or something. Let's see what we can find. <laughs> What's the best way to have some really cool stuff outside check out this dodge 600 over here this thing is sweet oh, that's all the right colors nebraska we got to go widescreen just so we can get it to fit in the frame look at that that's nice i wonder if it's open oh, wow that's beautiful oh what do we have over here? Oh, over there. I like this guy. <laughs> really cool Dodge on that side. We've got another Dodge right over here. Wow. That looks sweet. Let me check this one out real quick before he comes back. Another 600. Oh man, oh, but it looks so good on the inside. The outside looks like it was painted recently. Well, no, it's got some stuff near the, some rust near there, but looks great. Okay, one more engine to go. I think I just ran past one of my favorite cars. It might be a Caprice and not an SS, but let's see. Oh, yep, Caprice. So we're all loaded up. Come and check it out. We've got three 3.8 engines. 
I can't see what the bolt pattern is on the oil pan, so I don't know if they're 14 or 20 bolt, but I do know that they're out of a 3.8 rear wheel drive car, so they'll be perfect for what we need. So we gotta head back on the highway, we gotta get back home. Let's do it. All right, so we made it back locally. So we just stepped into Home Depot and need to grab a pallet jack so we can lift these engines around. All right, pallet jack loaded up. They only had the long ones, but it should work. One more stop to go. All right, so we made it. We got the lease signed. I got my unit. I got a 10 by 30, so I can store all of the car parts that I've ever needed to store are right here. So we're gonna take two engines, put it in here, and then the third one, we'll start to rebuild Astro Roof. So let's get it off and in there. Mm -mm. All right, let me bring you in a little bit closer to show you what's going on with this engine. So those of you familiar with the engine, you'll know that the casting marks that are down here in the lifter galleys, they are they're like this on the 84 and 85 blocks. So what I'm pretty sure of is that these are 20 bolt 85 blocks. Taking a look at the front of the casting, there's no provision for the oil drain back that's on the 86 and 87 blocks. And looking at the galley of Astro Roof's engine, I know that these galley, uh, these mismatched and rough castings are familiar with that block engine. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna work on our turbo Buicks. All right, so we got a journey to go back home. Might as well strap this one tight so it doesn't move anywhere. Last leg, we can get it back in the garage, tear it down, inspect it, make sure everything looks good before we start pulling the engine out of Astro Roof. All right, finally, I wanted to show you some of the paperwork that came with the sale of the engine. And if you notice, these are GM part orders. And we've got core return instructions up here. We've got metric attachment sheets for the water pump to the timing cover. Installation instructions. <laughs> Even the limited warranty cards. It's crazy the amount of detail that came with these engines. But now that I'm back home and everything is taken care of, in the next episode, I'll get it up on the engine stand, take a look at it, make sure that, you know, 1991 is a really long time. So let's make sure that these 30-year-old new engines are still in good shape and ready to be dropped into Astro Roof. But again, thanks for watching. Enjoy your holiday. Talk to you on the next one. Oh.